All right, so I want to do a dirt problem. <laughs> They're called dirt. Well, all right, not dirt, but you know what I mean. Um, There's a distance rate time problem. So I call it dirt D distance rate and time. D equals RT dirt problem. Distance equals rate times time. Now you can manipulate this any way that you want. Right now, distance is isolated. But if I want, you know, rate to be isolated, <laughs> excuse me, I would divide both sides by time. So then rate would be distance over time or time would be distance over rate. You can manipulate this anyway, but this is the foundation. This is your dirt problem. Now, <clears throat> anytime you can identify you have a dirt problem, if you know you hear uh, talk about distance, if you hear talk about speed, and you hear talk about time. Now, sometimes they ask for distance, sometimes they ask for rate, sometimes they ask for time, you know, it varies. But the way that you approach them is going to be the same. So for example, with the wind, an airplane can fly this distance in this amount of time. I hear distance and I hear time. Against the wind, it takes eight hours. Find the rate of the plane in still air. So there's talk about distance, there's talk about time, and there's talk about rate. So it's a dirt problem. When you know that it's a dirt problem, you're going to set up a table. You're going to make a column for distance, a column for rate, and a column for time. And typically, two unknown rows. Distance, rate, time. Now, the distance is in miles. The time is in hours. And so the rate is in miles per hour. And that could vary. It could be in feet, in seconds. You know, it just depends. In this case, you know, always identify your units. My distance in miles, my time in hours. So my rate, my speed in miles per hour. So now you want to identify the two situations. In this case, my two situations is either the plane is going with the wind or against the wind. Sometimes upstream, downstream, you know, with boats, those are typical examples too. You're going with the stream or against the stream. In this case, with the wind or against the wind. All right, so here's my first case, with the wind. So with the wind, oh, let me call it, let me color coordinate. With the wind, an airplane can fly this distance. Oh, this is known. Let me put that in here, my little box. With the wind, my distance is 1120 miles. And he can, oh, you know, this airplane with the wind can do that in seven hours. So I know the time. I'm inputting into my table as I read. All right, let's see. Okay, against the wind, it takes eight hours. The distance is the same. I need a different color. I'm sick of looking at green. Uh, all right, I'm gonna use pink. <laughs> all right, um, <clears throat> against the wind, the distance is the same, but the time is different, eight hours. So I'm filling things in as I go along. Okay, my rates, I don't know the rates. So I'm gonna use variables to represent my unknowns. And it looks like I have two unknowns, the rate of the plane in still air and the rate of the plane uh, and, and the rate of the, uh, the wind. Those are my two, uh, I don't the color because I can't see that color. Those are my two unknowns, the rate of the plane in still air and the rate of the wind. So let's call X the rate of the plane in still air, you know, without wind. I will call Y the rate of the wind. So if you, pull variables into your uh, situation, define them so you remember what they are. I always write it at the side. So now, <clears throat> rate with wind. So rate with wind. Wind is pushing me faster, right? So I'm gonna go, or the plane is going X whatever miles per hour, and the wind is pushing it faster. So it's plus increasing the amount of speed of the wind. X plus Y is an expression to represent the, the rate of the, with the wind against the wind. So I'm going, you know, my plane is going X miles per hour and the wind is pushing against me. So it's making me a little slower. So I'm subtracting the rate of the wind from the rate of the plane in still air. So these are my variables and those are my expressions to represent my, represent my situation. Cool. Now, <clears throat> um, there are a couple ways you could do this. One way is to go straight across each row. 
Distance equals rate times time. So the distance, 1120 with wind, is equal to the rate at which you know, it moves times the time at which it moves, seven times x plus y. That's equation one coming from this guy. Equation two across this row. The distance is equal to the rate times the time, eight times x minus y. Boom. Two unknowns, guess what? I need a system of equations, right? If I have two unknowns, then I'm looking for two equations. I'm going to pull this into the next page so that I can have space to, okay? And then I have um, different methods that I could use to solve these. Substitution, elimination, it varies. Whatever you choose is up to you. Um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and distribute the seven and the eight. Sometimes you can, <laughs> excuse me, let me see if I can uh, divide by seven. 1120 divided by seven goes evenly. Let me see if 1120 divided by eight goes evenly. <clears throat> it does. So what I'm going to do, and um, typically this is okay, is I'm going to divide in equation one, everything by seven. So everything by seven, and then equation two, everything by eight. And so what that's gonna do for me is make my life easier. Equation one is going to become, I forgot what 11, what was 1120 divided by seven? 1120 divided by seven was 160. So I have 160 is equal to seven to cancel, just X plus Y. And then let me see, 1120 divided by eight was 140. 140 is equal to the eights cancel x minus y. So look at this. I'm gonna rewrite it this way. Both of them mean the same thing, but typically you're used to seeing it this way, right? Where, you know, your variables are on the left and your constants are on the right. Doesn't matter how you solve this. If you wanna do elimination or substitution, I'm going to do elimination and add them together because I already have what I need to eliminate the y's. Add down the x, two x's, these cancel is equal to 300. Nice. Divide both sides by two, x is 150. So I have 150 for x. I don't remember what x is. We'll go back and check it out after I find y. If I wanna find y, let's use one of these, whatever this one. Um, 150 minus y is equal to 140, which means that y is equal to 10. So let's go back because I want to answer the question based on the question. And my X represented the rate of the plane in still air and Y represented the weight, the, the weight, the rate of the wind. So my solution is now the rate of the plane in still air or without the wind is 150 miles per hour, which is pretty slow. A small plane, I guess. I don't know. The rate of the wind is 10 miles per hour. And this is my solution. Sometimes you're asked for one of them. You're not necessarily asked for both of them, but I saw for both just to show you. Not that. So if you hear, again, a situation where, you know, this person goes this amount of distance in this amount of time, um, this person goes this distance in this amount of time, or this rate, Anything that involves a distance and a time and a rate is a dirt problem. And you're going to set up a table, determine whatever is given to you. And then from there, you might need to create some expressions dependent on the situation. And that varies, but you're always using the same table and the same formula. Distance equals rate times time. So um, I'll do another example in my next video.